Hallelujah. <laughs> so there's probably several different titles to this word, and I didn't. I, I just kept on titling it different, different. But I ended up with one of them called the Gospel with No Stir. That's where one of the one of the points actually kind of stuck out, and uh, you could call it lots of different things. It's going to be something like the call of God. You know, the God trying to call people, and uh, when He does, there's there's something that happens in, in the call when people on this earth actually know he's actually calling. They actually recognize that God is actually calling. There's actually something happening past your day-to-day -day life, past your maybe even religious circles, but there's something past all that where, you, uh, where a mortal can actually recognize that they are personally being dealt with or contacted by God himself. Amen? So, um, John chapter 5 has a really interesting portion that stuck out like a sore thumb to me. Um, while, I, while this kind of thought came to mind, it was over a couple days, and then part 1 came one day, and part 2 came, I think, on Thursday, and it was really powerful. Very, very powerful. And like, uh, there's a few passages I'm going to read that I don't want you to turn to. I just want you to turn to John 5, because that's where the, mo the main portion is going to be at. And uh, so we can go ahead and read, read there. I really want to focus on a couple things. It's the call of God. You can look at the few passages in the Bible, Old and New Testament, where he, he's telling you to come. God is always reaching out his hand of mercy, no matter what condition people are in. I believe for all human beings on this planet, unless your cup of iniquity is full, okay? There is an argument there. I, I'm not going to go there into that theology. I don't really care about that. I care about God's call to all mankind to come. And he has some really good verses in that. I'll read them all right now. Um, it's called Matthew 11:28. And he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's his number, that's first, that's come number one. And then, um, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. It's a sign of mercy. I will give you rest. You know, that's God talking there, Isaiah 118. Um, he says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Okay, and Isaiah 55 Number one says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. It's like God's call is so evident. It's so precious. And when that truth actually reaches your heart, it's like an undeniable wonder of, of mercy and love to anybody. He wasn't, he was, he's not like, Saying, well, you and you can't come. It's to anybody. There's, a, but he has a price for everybody as well. You know, the one coming before Jesus, he says, you know, he's a man in the wilderness, you know, crying out in the wilderness to, to pre prepare the way for the Lord Jesus to come. And he, and every time he was baptizing, John was baptizing people. He always said to everybody, he's like, yeah, you can all come. What must I do? And he would tell each and every person exactly what it was going to cost them. There was a cost. He didn't deny that part. Yes, it's God's grace alone, but he also says that it's your faith in my grace. It's me. I, Father, raised my son. Do you believe it? You know, there's going to be a faith administered by you, and with a faith, there's going to be works that come to, to into play. So in some sense, you can say there's a trifold. It's his grace, our faith, with works to prove our faith is real in his grace. So yes, it's his grace only, but which way you're looking at that? So... John, John chapter 5, verse 1, has a really awesome portrait that I want to look at this thing and see if we can't look at the call of God. I want to paint a few portraits of things that I believe is very evil and then see something that uh, the gospel today that is trying to come out, and it's tried to come out since right after the gospel, since Jesus just went into heaven. I mean, the devil didn't waste any time at all to just jump in there and make a gospel that is just not what God is saying at all. So we can see, praise God, that when... Uh, People are talking, no telling what people can come up with. But when God gets involved, amen, okay? So the portrait there is not only um, a gospel with no stir, it's also um, people with a genuine heart are waiting for the troubling of the water, amen? So it's, uh, I'm going to pray real quick and then we'll look at this. Heavenly Father, I need you to breathe. That's the only way eternal, the eternal, eternity's call can ever reach our heart, not only just to salvation, but to continue on in the work of sanctification, in the pure walk, the true walk, Lord, is, 
it starts with the Holy Spirit pointing to Jesus, and it continues on with the Holy Spirit pointing to Jesus, Lord God. I know that in flesh um, there's nothing that can happen of any eternal value, God, and I just pray that you would breathe here, that you would speak here, that eternal, eternal call would be evident to the hearts of all the hearers, Lord. It's your work. It is, it is your name writing on the work, Lord God. We recognize it. And thank you, Lord God, for the chance to hear from you tonight, Lord. I pray your word that is spirit would be spirit to us and be sustenance and nourishment for our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It says, After this, there was a great feast. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it says in verse 4 what that's all about. It says, for an angel went down at a certain season. It's kind of, if it's a season, sometimes you think that's kind of a spread out period of time between the angel coming down and waits a long time, comes down again. So it's like, wow, it's coming again. It's like, it's a big deal, you know. So he says he comes down certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Hallelujah. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Okay, now... I know like a lot of passages, especially in the New Testament, there really is no place to cut off, okay? But what is so powerful about this is that there is something that's already established by God, okay? You could go into the water anytime and say, oh, wow, this is that thing. You know, we could go back there today and it's just like an awe experience. You see the pictures up there of, the, of what it used to look like right there? And then after the ruins, it starts to be tore down. The wall around it's all tore down. You see how there's two different walls? It's actually the same exact view up here is the staircase leading up to the front, the top square and the lower square. So this must be the lower square where maybe Jesus was at to heal him. If you go right there just looking at those pictures and thinking Jesus actually walked there, makes my hair stand up and go like, whoa, it's so <laughs> precious. Isn't that powerful? But even, if, even while he was walking on earth and people were right there, if you went into the water, guess what would happen? Nothing. Unless the water was troubled. You know, that angel was not the healer. Okay, God... God authorizes all the healing, even though the angels are under his submission, amen? And so when he comes down, the angel comes down, it's under the authorization of the Almighty. <laughs> I love to call him the Almighty, like, when, remember um, Mark, Ruth, is, who's, who's bitter, the bitter, bitter mom? Wait, it's, it's Ruth. Ruth's mom, and Naomi. she said, Naomi, she says, don't call me Naomi, because the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me, or something like that. But it's just like... <laughs> I'm like, whoa, the Almighty. But the Almighty authorizes this, this troubling of the water, amen? And so this angel comes down from season to season, and it's under authorization of God. So you move when God is moving, and something happens, amen? Your flesh is changed from, from halt and withered to being whole because God troubled the water, amen? There was a stirring there. It was actually God authorized, and it actually did happen, something that really did happen. Amen. And there's really even something even further than that. Jesus is walking here. And he's the author of the angel. And he's like, you know what? Kind of like that one guy who was born blind. Remember that one? They're asking, why? Why is this guy born blind? Was it his sin or his parents' sin? And he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. This guy's name is going to go down in history. He paid a long price, but guess what? His name is going to go down in the book of books. And he's gonna, he's, I'm going to use him to paint a portrait of somebody who's filled with the works of God. Glory! Amen. And same here. This guy's been there 38 years. Like, man, Lord, that's a big price to pay. His name is going down in the Hall of Fame so that God can show you what it looks like to be filled with the works of God. 
the troubling of the waters happened right then. He's like, it's not even the season right now. But guess what? I'm the author of that season. I'm the author of everything. I happen to be the Lord of the harvest. I happen to be the Lord of the Sabbath. And I happen to be the Lord of the troubling of the waters. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am the CEO of it all. I authorize this whole thing. I've watched it all going in motion. Now I'm talking to you directly. Wilt thou be made whole? He's like, I can't do it. I can't get in the water. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm here right now, and I'm talking to you now. <laughs> what about the word, Lord? I am the word. <laughs> I am the one who authorizes. You're going right to the source right now, says the Lord. Amen? powerful and so there's a stirring that happened here and he got it he just says you know what it's already done take up your bed and walk so many things you could come up with that he's making him walk on the on the day it's a sabbath day you can't do that the religious people that's against the word of god and remember when jesus is walking with his disciples picking corn cobs and all this stuff and the, and the pharisees are like what you doing this is the sabbath why are you guys picking stuff right now he's like man david did it took the show break because he was hungry any other silly questions? Come on, man. The Sabbath was made for people. Come on. You guys are using the Word of God to hurt people, and I made it to help people. You guys are using my Word to hurt people. You guys are all backwards, man. Come on. Get a clue. Even David did it. Do you guys rebuke David? No? Then why are you doing it now? <laughs> you know, he just keeps on setting it all straight all the time. Amen? So there's another portion in there that's really powerful. But the point is, is that there's a stirring when God is really active. Their gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul says it like this. He says, I'm not ashamed of a gospel that I know is going to get my head chopped off, persecuted, whipped, and sh going sh shipwrecked and everything else. I'm going to be persecuted, and I'm going to walk with the minister of Satan, trashing me and reminding me of my past and whatever else he was doing as a thorn in my flesh. He says, I don't care. Guess what? There was a stirring that happened there. He says this of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. I believe the biblical declaration of God's gospel of the Father raising the Son who did die and three days raised him again is a gospel of power. If you ever recognize what it was supposed to be, it's not just believing. You know what I'm saying? It's like to believe in Jesus Christ. You're like, okay, that's all you got to do? No problem. I believe. I'm like, you don't understand, okay? I'm going to give you a couple portraits. One portrait was this. It was a nephew. Um, it was coming through town of a pastor. I used to go to this big old church, and the and the young the young guy comes into town, goes to church. He's not even a saved yet. He wanted to be saved, and he met with me. And I'm over there talking about stuff at the altar, like blah blah blah. Let's go get him all fired up. He says I was so excited. Starts to be my friend. We exchange numbers. He goes to my house, and I'm like, you're not even a Christian yet. Let me explain all this stuff to you. How God is really true, and how the word of God is really right, and Jesus is real all the way. He's like, oh, it makes all the sense in the world. Let's do this thing. I'm like, okay. So we prayed the sinner's prayer, and I'm telling you, it was as dead as a doornail. Don't amen it, because it was false. It was a false conversion. I led somebody in a false conversion. I didn't mean to. I even said repentance and give you my whole life, Lord. But God was not there. There was not a setup to say, I do believe. There was no stirring. God was not the author of that thing. Amen? It has to be real. There has to be a stirring. A gospel with no stir is the worst thing you could ever do to anybody. Think about the most evil things in, your, in this whole world. You could go down the list and you say, now there's some really messed up stuff going on in this world. I'm saying nothing could be more messed up than a gospel without stir. I failed there and I knew it. We both looked at each other like it was as dead as a doornail. God was a million miles from it. And I declared him to be saved because that's what I've been taught. The gospel with no stir. The worst thing that could ever hit this face of the planet because as soon as someone believes themselves to be saved, they no longer will listen to anybody correct them again. They no longer will. They've been, they've been immunized against the shot of the truth. The truth Holy Spirit comes and they'll, they've been almost trained to blaspheme God and say, I'm not going to listen to truth anymore. I'm going to only listen to my Jesus who lets me do whatever I want to. That's what they've been taught. Believe it or not, that is what happens. But you know what it feels like to get into... Have you ever sat there and watched a movie and then someone walks in towards the end of the movie and you're like, shh, shh, shh you're ruining the moment. And you're like, oh, all your hair standing up, whether it's a big love movie or a big epic movie, and the climax is happening, and you're just like, shh, shh. And everybody's like, oh. And then someone walks in, they're like, what are you guys doing? Who cares? They fell in love. The victory happened, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Because they weren't there for the whole set. There was nothing happening. He doesn't even understand what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So someone can say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 
But there's no setup sometimes. There has to be a setup and a buildup of God to say, I am God. My call is real. I'm saying, come. God must be the one stirring. He must be the author of this whole thing for you to say, now I know what I mean when I say I believe because God is talking to me right now. He told me not only who he is, he didn't just tell me how foul I was. He also told me what he wanted of me. Amen. His call has a call of wonder, but it's got a cost to it. He's got, a, he's got instructions along with it too. So how in the world are you going to walk in the Holy Spirit if the Holy Spirit's not directing you? Someone walking with a gospel with no stir. That's all you're following. You live to please Him and His opinion of God's Word. This is God's Word. This is what God does say. And every time you hear someone talking about this book, you're hearing what they think God meant. That is all. And if you hear all kinds of different people talking about what they think God meant, they don't agree. Really, people don't agree on what God, what they think God means. So how reliable is it to trust that? How, how reliable is it to trust your heart that is deceitful among all things? God must be the author of it. He must be the one that stirred it from the beginning and continuing on. He said, enter at the straight gate. That is the straight gate. God calling. He said, come. If you thirst, come. I'll, I'll give you rest. Come. I've got nothing but mercy to dump on you. Come where I actually am. There's a light shining. Walk in the light. Stay in the light. Don't drift off. I'll guide you by my Holy Spirit. I'll lead you in a gospel of power like Paul declared it to be. A revealing of Christ to the heart of man. A gospel that changes you. Not just to stop smoking, but to change everything. All things become new. My power of the cross has power to undo things. Some of the things you might have to deal with again, like Zacchaeus. The Holy Spirit says, I want you to make restitution here. And other times it's just stop doing it. If you hurt somebody, you fill them with a bunch of holes, you think, come on, go back there, pull all the nails out of their heart, and go fill them with love the way that they need it done. I'll lead you every step of the way if you want to do it right. And if you do it right, guess what's going to happen? I'll trouble the waters all over again. His people are waiting for the troubling of the water so the powerful, their, their biblical understanding will be real. What if, what if Ezekiel goes out to the Valley of Dry Bones? And just sits there and reads the, reads the scrolls. God, I'm believing for you to do something here. No. He went there for a reason. He did everything God told him to do. Incredible prophet. Hallelujah. God used him to do all kinds of portraits of things that were happening in the natural. Amen. And then he goes to the valley of dry bones and he says, Can this, can this even live? And he says, Thou knowest, Lord. It was in God's way and in His time, and God orchestrated it for His own glory. And then bones rattled, and muscles came on there, and there's a field full of people. We can't do these things on our, in our flesh. We can't do these things on our own. They mean nothing, amen? It's nothing. Dead. It's a gospel without stir. God's not there. It's not worthy of calling it Christianity. Christianity, he says it like this. He says, narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few are them that find it. <laughs> you see, but I got the book. I got the Bible. I'm like, guess what? It's the most popular book in the planet, and it always has been. Big deal. Not everybody who has a Bible is going to go to heaven. The Bible is not the path to life. It's the spiritual side of the acknowledging that God is really there. And nature declares all his glory too, declaring with nature that God is really there. Romans also says that there'll be no excuse because he says all that is created will declare his eternal power and Godhead. So no one will have an excuse to say that I didn't know he was there. No, you knew and you chose not to listen because you didn't want to. You loved the world. You loved the wicked ways of the world more than you love God who was declared with all of his own creation. You knew it at one point, and you said no. And that's a crime you'll never forget. That's how infinitely worthy he really is for you to stop playing games in your mind. But the Word of God is also very popular as well. The best seller in the history of the world, bar none. King James alone is, is, is high, high bestseller throughout the history of the world. Praise God. So people know. People have a spiritual call, and they have a natural call to know that he is there. So there is no excuse. But it's just, it doesn't stop there, amen? He said the path is narrow. 
The path is narrow for those that want to come into the stir. They want to come into where the waters are troubled by God himself. They want to come where he is. I understand there's dry places that God does authorize. Amen. There's a really cool quote from that one guy, Oswald Chambers. He says something about like, it's people are always looking for like exciting things to happen. They need, they need visions and they need dreams to be happening. All these different kind of things to be happening in order for them to be true to God. But, and he says, and they, and they can be hiding away in their prayer closet with no recognition of anybody and they're totally fine with it. They didn't get anything from it and they're totally fine with it. And that's, uh, they're faithful through those places where they can't really see. They're just doing the best that they know because God is testing them in those little times of, of, of dryness and the valleys or such like this. Amen? So I understand that, but the gospel, the gospel gate, the gospel call, and the gospel path is 100%, at least from glory to glory, at least from faith to faith, where there is a troubling of the water. It's not a gospel that lacks a stirring. It's not a gospel that lacks the actual presence of God. It's a gospel and a path that is, is from the top to the bottom, orchestrated and led by the power of the Holy Spirit, leading us in a way that is very, very real. I don't think there's any trip, uh, any trap stronger. I don't think there's any trap stronger than casualness among God's people. And when you get into sin, it makes you casual. But the gospel without a stir, a gospel without the presence of God is even worse. It's, it's one thing to fall into what a lot of men fall into in the, in the churches, in pornography. They fall into adultery. We live in a generation that just promotes adultery. If, you are, if we, people are not guarding their heart, they'll sit there and watch stuff on television, and Satan will start to, start to bring seeds of temptation. And all of a sudden it starts to take form, maybe not in one day, maybe not in one year, maybe in two years. Something that you started allowing your heart will start to take form later on in your heart. And it shows up later on. Because of somebody believing in a gospel that starts with no stirring. People jumping in the water and saying they're healed when the angel of the Lord hasn't even troubled any waters. They're saying yes to Jesus when Jesus isn't even saying anything to them right now. They haven't been set up for the moment. They don't even know what they're saying. They don't even understand what they mean by that. How can you say I'm saying yes to Jesus if Jesus is not manifest in the moment. Just let you know what he is and what who you are and what he's requiring of you. Those things aren't calling. He's saying, come. He says them to come all these different ways. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He says, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord, that your sins may be scarlet and be white as snow. They might have been red like crimson, but they shall be white as wool. Come, everyone that thirsteth. Come to the waters. He that has no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. He's saying to come. And when he comes real, when he actually shows up on the scene and the waters are actually stirred, then you can start to know that God is actually talking. And so when you say yes to Jesus, you're actually saying yes to Jesus. And not someone just telling you. Amen? God does bring leaders. Some people are trying to preach against their, their not being needed of pastors. I'm like, what about the fivefold of ministry? What are you talking about? What about the fivefold ministry? He says there's going to be pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets and apostles. What about that? It's not, it's not against scripture. I mean, that's, it's not unscriptural to have leaders. He says, I'm going to give you pastors and feed you my mind and my understanding, my knowledge, and my wisdom. But God still wants his own people. He still wants all the people, whether they're leaders or not, to still go there into a gospel where God does show up. Where God actually comes to show up and say, this is who I am and this is what I'm asking of you. We're in John chapter 5, by the way, if you want to see it. I believe the gospel that God is preaching here and the apostles have preached here is a gospel where God is absolutely in the midst. What we saw at the very beginning of the church age was so powerful. It was so powerful that people never got away with just care. They didn't. They, they didn't get care. They didn't. They didn't get away with anything. 
I'm telling you, if, if, if the power of the Holy Spirit came down like at Pentecost, if it did that in America right now, the churches would get a rude awakening of who God really was. And they would actually understand what gospel was really begun there. And they would understand trembling. It would be very, very easy to work out your salvation with fear and trembling if that same presence did come back. But instead we got gangsters in the pulpits today. Shooting people full of holes with a gospel that has no manifest presence of God. I'd rather you led somebody in absolute stealing, absolute debauchery, absolute filth, absolute murder, anything, because it's obvious. But when you get so close and yet so far, You're like, you don't have to wonder what the temperature outside is. It just gets too close to the window. You can feel what's going on out there because you know. But until that window of heaven is opened up, you can actually pass through and pass from death and into life because God is saying, this is who I am. This is who you are. Daughter, now you are mine. You are saved now. I'm the only one who gets to tell you that. I'm the only one who gets to confirm that you're still walking right. I'm the author of everything. The Lord of the harvest, the Lord of the Sabbath, and the Lord of your life, constantly confirming who I am in you, what I'm calling you to, and where you once were, but now. Continuing on the path. The Bible tells you about the vast majority of people who will take the truth, because their heart was a little funny. Different things come along and took them off. I think one of the worst tricks that could ever happen is someone being off and not knowing it. It's the worst thing that could ever happen. Nothing could be more stronger of a, a New Testament warning than deception. That's why I always make plain as can be about the heart of mankind. Because if our hearts are not pure, we will fall into deception. We will. The devil knows us really well. He's had 6,000 years of knowing how to hit people with their own weakness and make a lie look true. So many people, even the Pharisees, they knew the book and they were always wrong about their perspective of it. They always were wrong. Jesus came down there and said, you guys, you guys have no idea how far off the path you guys are. You guys have no care for the things that matter most. You guys make such big deals about things that are important but you don't even see those right, let alone the things that really do matter. He came back with a sword, amen? And he beloved those who they rebuked. And two people come out of that temple. One humble, calling himself what he is, a sinner. <laughs> and one coming out, wish, glad he's not like the other guy. And I say one did come out justified. And the other one came out just fried. Just a fried. Greater damnation because he was talking about God and not bringing the true gospel. Greater damnation for the bastards and the teachers that are bringing a false gospel. A gospel with no stir. A gospel where God is not evident. A gospel where God is not present. And a gospel that does not allow God to lead that individual from beginning to end. Is not the gospel of the New Testament. Is not the gospel of our, of our apostles. It's totally divorced from what Jesus was preaching. Jesus was preaching a gospel where God did take form. Amen. <coughs> in the job sites, we have people who respect leaders more than people respect people and the leaders in churches. People back talk leaders in churches much quicker than they would their own job. They're more worried about money than they are worried about God. Even if they was not make mistake. Remember Noah? Remember what happened to him? Even when, even when the leader was dead wrong. I mean, really wrong. God has a way of doing things. Crazy words coming out to make people do things that is not really pleasing to God and does not allow the light of heaven to reach the heart again. 
Back it up with as much scripture as you want to, but I'm telling you the only one who can authorize it is the author of life himself. The very first and the very last. And he has the first and say and the final say about who we are. Father doesn't judge. He says he's, commi he's committed all the judgments of the Son. So we're going to come and answer to him. Amen. And pray. Hallelujah. That the waters will be troubled. Meaning we know that God is stirring something here. That God is still changing us. He's still working on us. He's not giving up on us. He's still saying, come. He's still saying, I'm still holy, and you're still not. Without me, apart from me, you can do nothing. And I still have a requirement of you. To walk in what I call faith. Believing into righteousness. Believing into the Son of, Je Son of God, Jesus Christ. To a works that come after your faith that was birthed by God. Your, your life is going to change drastically. Not just in morality. From someone who didn't know God to someone who does know God and is known of Him. This is the gospel with stir. Narrow way that does lead to life. Jesus Christ. Taking form in our hearts. Amen. Somebody want to pray before we close? You pray? You pray? No? Not ready to pray. Sister, would you pray? Thank you, Lord, for the word. Help us know your way and know you so you can say you know us. Yeah. Make your way obvious to us mm -hmm. and get Satan out of our eyes so we can see clearly mm -hmm. the deception and all that. Cast it all out of us in the name of Jesus so that we could see your truth. Mm. Put the eyesight on our eyes, circumcise our ears to hear the truth, and count out the grossness of our heart so that we can understand the truth. And I pray for the food and, and bless it to the better men of our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't know if we're eating this, but at least it's covered. Yeah. Mm. Pre-blessed. <laughs>